What's up everyone, back for another beer review. And today is not only day six of the fourth annual 10 Days of Pumpkin, it is also Wednesday, which of course means it's time for another West York Wednesday here on the channel. And the beer I'm reviewing today comes from the Southern Tier Brewing Company and they're out of Lakewood, New York. And this is their cold brew coffee pumpkin nitro. So they're calling this one an Imperial Pumpkin Ale. And on the bottom here, it says ale with natural pumpkin and coffee flavors added. It's also in a nitro can. It comes in an 8.6% alcohol by volume, 30 IBUs at the time of review. This can is approximately two months old. So Southern Tier, I pretty much enjoy the vast majority of the pumpkin beers they have released to date. I've tried them all. I'm pretty sure I reviewed all of them as well. Uh, so when I saw them release this one this year, I was like, yeah, I got to grab this one. I got to do it during the 10 days of pumpkin. Um, so when they released their cold press coffee pumpkin about five or six years ago, uh, I thought it was delicious. Last couple times I've had it still delicious, not as delicious the first time I had it. So when I saw they did a nitro version, I'm like, yeah, sign me up. Um, they released their regular pumpkin nitro for the first time a couple years ago. I did a comparison between the regular pumpkin and the pumpkin nitro. I was going to do the same thing this time, but... I didn't want to do a side by side. I just wanted to kind of review this one on its own merits and that that's what we're going to do. So like I said, this is Imperial Pumpkin Ale. They're brewing it with pumpkin and coffee flavors added, they say. I'm sure there's different spices and whatnot in here. And it's the nitro can. I got the big hot butcher glass here. Hopefully be able to pour the vast majority. Now these big cans, uh, you would think are 16 ounces, but because of the nitro, they lose some. This is only 13.6 fluid ounces. So crack it open, get it in the glass, see what we got going on. I love the noise. I love the love the noise from the uh, nitro beer. So let's give it a hard pour here. Just leave it on the glass there on the uh, table here. Just do the hard pour. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's going to take a while probably to cascade and whatnot, but uh. Cool to see them release this one um, and, and do a nitro beer. I hope they do more variants of their pumpkin because pumpkin's pretty delicious. Some people think it's too sweet. Some people don't like it. Some people love it. I really like that beer, but I like the cold press coffee. Now they call this cold brew, cold press. Similar. Uh, I don't know. I, I would imagine they may probably just renamed it. But yeah, anyway, that looks beautiful. That looks like a nitro beer. It has this dirty, murky, almost slight turbid, um, like, like almost like dirty brown color to it. So it looks a little bit different than most pumpkin beers, but you know, that's kind of how cold pressed coffee looks. It has this two finger, two and a half finger of this super compact, super creamy. You know, that's a Guinness looking head. That's a, you know, left hand milk stout nitro head. That's just a nitro head. It looks beautiful. Now, the one thing about nitro beers is for me, when you do side by sides with like the regular beer and then they nitro it, like the left hand milk stout nitro versus left hands uh, just regular milk stout and then you do pumpkin versus pumpkin, I feel like the aroma takes away a little bit and it, overall the characters, but it makes up for it in that great, you know, mouthfeel you get from it. We'll see if that's the case with this one, but I can already smell coffee right from the get-go. Oh, fuck, it's, that, that smells really good. Oh, yeah. So that smells like a pumpkin spice latte to me. That's kind of what I'm getting. I'm getting intense roasted coffee. There's pumpkin spice. There's a little bit of like cinnamon and nutmeg kind of hanging out. Yeah, I mean, I take it back. It's more like roasted coffee or like a cold brew coffee, but like, you know, it just has like a roasted coffee scent. But then there's like a small scoop of like pumpkin pie in there. I'm getting vanilla. I'm getting a little bit of a sweeter kind of tinge to it, like a little bit of like a brown sugar caramel aspect to it. Yeah, I definitely smell the base pumpkin in here. Like, it's unmistakable. I feel like pumpkin has that distinct flavor from a, from a pumpkin ale where you get, like, the graham cracker crust. You get a little bit of the vanilla, and that's all coming from uh, the mold aspect or the natural pumpkin flavor aspect. Dude, listen. Honestly... A lot of times, like I said, mentioned earlier, the aroma gets lost in a lot of these nitro beers. I don't think it's getting lost here. I think this is one of the most intense nitro beer aromas I've ever had, which is crazy. Like, I smell the coffee. I smell the pumpkin pie. I smell the base malts. It's it's like you, you married. It's like you're eating a pumpkin pie with a cup of coffee. That's that's the aroma. Hopefully, the ta taste translates, but, like, man, it smells awesome. So I want to get into it. Cheers, everybody. Ooh. Cool. Hmm. That first, that first sip, there was a whole bunch of good and bad things happening at once. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Weird shit happening. Let's talk about the body of model field. Get it out of the way. For 8.6%, it shrinks like medium, maybe a touch under medium body, a little bit thin for 8.6%. I never really thought pumpkin or the cold press pumpkin were, you know, anything, you know, crazy when it comes to the body. Same thing with their like rum barrel age versions. Always a bit thin. Um, the mouthfeel, it's it's nitro, right? Like it's super creamy and soft and smooth and it's just fucking what you're looking for. If you're drinking a nitro beer, this delivers on that, right? The taste, it takes my taste buds for a ride that it has peaks and valleys <laughs> where some of them, like it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy to me because the peaks are fantastic with the valley. Hmm. Right at the front of the, for, uh, the the palate, I start reminiscing about the first time I had pumpkin because I'm getting the base pumpkin. It's sweeter malt aspect. Like I'm getting the slight graham cracker kind of tinge you get to it. Uh, the vanilla, this one's heavy on like the ginger and the cinnamon. It has a spicy component and that's right at the forefront. So it's sweeter malt aspect, the, the pumpkin spice, and you're like, man, that's the pumpkin I remember. However, On the middle of the palate to the finish, the coffee peaks in. It hits for me. And at first, it has just a really nice, like, roasted coffee kind of aspect, right? Like, it just the coffee flavor uh, without, like, an acidity, you know, cold brew, without, like, a big acidity, without an overbearing roasted kind of note to it. However, as I swallow the sip and it lingers on my palate for the, like, three seconds afterwards... I'm getting hit with this burnt coffee, over roasted kind of astringency that I'm not enjoying. This is not, I was, I was gonna think this is too sweet. Like I think that's the argument people make with pumpkin and a lot of the variants, well, the coffee one and the rum barrel one, like it can be too sweet. And I can see that aspect for me. Those beers are never sickly sweet or anything. They're not cloying, but I can see that they have big sweetness for this. I feel like, I don't know if it's a nitro or whatever, but this isn't oversweet to me. Again, it's malt forward at the beginning, the first half of the palate. It definitely has a malt sweetness to it, but there's a little bit of like a mild bitterness and a semi-dry kind of finish. I just don't like that like burnt coffee kind of astringency on the back of the palate. It's weird. And I honestly don't remember that in the cold press coffee regular version, which is why I like that beer, which is why I pretty much love that beer. This though... Very reminiscent of that beer without that that burnt coffee finish. Almost like a a charred kind of like, like you just burnt your coffee. Like, you know, it's just like it's not, I don't know. It's like the coffee beans themselves were burnt instead of roasted. Hmm. 8.6%. I can't like, no alcohol stringency. They hide it extremely well. Um, I'll go one more sip and I'm... I'll go with a score because this is tough to score. Like I like 75% of this beer. It's just the, the finish and the lingering flavor on my palate is what kind of ruins the experience for me. I hate to do it, but uh, Cold Brew Coffee Pumpkin Nitro, the 2021 release. Best I can do on this is like a 3.75 out of 5. Like if that finish wasn't there, this is like a 4.25, a 4.2. Like, it knocks it down that much because, think about it, like, if you drink any beer, if the finish of a beer is something that you don't enjoy, like, you're probably not going to love that beer. Uh, certainly, probably not go, sh you know, crazy about it. 375 to me is, like, it's a good, solid beer. Um, I'd drink it if this if somebody gave this to me again, but I, I don't think I'd buy this again. Um, I don't know. I just don't like that that finish. It, it kind of sucks. Um the beer overall, though, it's solid. It's just that, like, I want, you know, you know, you get those beers where they're too dry in the finish and you want to go back to take a sip to get rid of that dryness and the dryness builds. That's kind of what this beer is like, man, I fucking hate that, that burnt coffee kind of finish. So let me take a sip. You're like, oh man, that's good. And then like three seconds pass, and you're like, man, that burnt coffee's back. Not good. Let me take another sip. So it's um, very drinkable from that aspect. It makes you go back for more, but. I just don't like that burnt coffee aspect. It's not undrinkable. And that finish isn't terrible to the point where it's like, oh, it's just like, it's an astringent kind of character that 
I don't want in my beer. So uh, that's the best I can do on it. So 3.75 out of five. Price and availability, I think price point on this one was $16 a four pack in general. Uh, you might be fine, you know, be able to find it 14, 15 bucks, six pack, maybe some places, you know, 18, 20 dollars four pack for me. It was $16 four pack and availability. Wherever you see Southern Tier and Pumpkin and any of the variants, you should see this one this year. Um, by the time I release this, who knows if these are gone. Uh, I talk about it in every single review, basically, but like a lot of these beers are released in July and August. So when it comes to September and October, when I actually drink them, a lot of them are, you know, six weeks old, two months old, three months old. And that's that's where we are right now. This is about two months old. So um, I really want to know people's thoughts on this one out there. If you've had this one this year, what do you think about this one? Because uh, it's disappointing to me. And it's sad because I really like Southern Tier. I like this lineup. I like Pumpkin. Uh, you see all the reviews on my channel. I, I, you know, pretty much say how much I enjoy them. But for me, this just that finish is just not, not it. It's not it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another uh, beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Stop by tomorrow for day seven of the ten days of Pumpkin. We're getting into the the last four reviews or so, and uh, hopefully they're better than this one. Appreciate everybody stopping by to the next one. Cheers.